I'm Brian E. DuPont. I'm an assistant professor of mechanical engineering at Oregon State University. Today I'd like to talk to you about offshore renewable energy. So a quick primer on wave power. Uh, as the name suggests, wave energy converters convert the momentum within a wave into electricity. Um, there are myriad ways of doing this right now. Uh, this is an attenuating device, so it floats, and then as the wave flows through kind of this hinge, the mechanism at the hinge is what generates the electricity. And a more common design is here. This is a point absorber, uh, so it's kind of like a buoy, and it generates power in heave, so in your positive y direction. So just to give you the kind of global footprint of wave energy, um, there are, I believe, 18 different countries that have installed wave energy capacity um, or consented wave energy products. When we talk about global wave energy potential, we're talking about terawatts. Um, so really energy dense resource. As far as the current state of wave energy in the United States, uh, we have a committed project off the coast of Oregon uh, called PacWave. This is a $40 million DOE sponsored project. It is a pre-permitted, grid-connected, plug-and-play wave energy test bed. So anybody can show up with a wave energy converter, we can hook it up at this site and you can get a ton of data uh, about how your device will perform in actual ocean conditions. The primary reason why wave energy seems like a good idea, from an engineering design perspective at least, is that people live on coasts. So this map shows where the highest population centers are globally. And just with a cursory glance, you can see that almost all of them are located uh, very close to coastlines. In the US, 50% of the US population lives within 50 miles of an ocean coast. Um, and 78% of the energy used in the US is within coastal regions as well. So people are there, the energy demand is there. Another reason is these offshore renewable energy technologies actually have a really high capacity. Um, so wave energy potential along US coasts is about 1200 terawatt hours per year and one terawatt hour per year can power just shy of 100,000 US homes. So here's what I kind of envision as the path forward. So like I said, right now, we're really focusing on grid scale research and development. It's our, it's our current funding priority. Um, a lot of the research that you're seeing funded in both wave energy converter design and systems design uh, is centered around getting these integrated in the US grid. I think from here, looking at emerging markets makes a lot of sense. Having researchers look more at emerging markets forces us to think about scalability. So a lot of these, these offshore systems don't need a ton of power. They maybe will need a smaller device. Um, they maybe won't need an array of large devices, maybe only a single device. So I think shifting focus and looking at emerging markets is, is a kind of a logical stepping stone towards what I'm calling developing applications. So this would be how we could use wave energy for remote coastal opportunities, maybe in poorer countries or lower resource areas, um, and also things like, um, like military bases or anything that's kind of off the grid. So quite a bit of work to be done here. It's a really exciting space to be in. It's hugely, hugely multidisciplinary and could really benefit um, from engineering design. I think we could bring immense value to this space. Thank you.